Hello, today we will discuss about karyotyping. What is karyotyping? Karyotyping is a test to identify and evaluate the size, shape and number of the chromosomes in a sample of the body cells. What is a karyotype? It is a standard arrangement of photograph or image stain metaphase spread in which chromosome pairs are arranged in order of their decreasing length. This is the example of the karyotype. This is a normal human karyotype. In this we can see the chromosomes are arranged in order of their decreasing length. We can see there are 22 pairs. There are 22 pairs of the chromosomes. These are the autosomes. Whereas there is one pair, 23rd pair is of the sex chromosome. Now to understand karyotyping, we want to know about the chromosome. So chromosome has two identical chromatids. There is a short arm which is known as the P arm. There is a long arm which is known as the Q arm. And there is a constricted point of the chromosome which is known as the centromere. Now there is chromosome labeling. So to identify a chromosome, we give it a number. We give it 1 to 22 or X and Y. And each arm of the chromosome is divided into subregions and each subregion is further divided into bands. There is example, example 1 Q 2.4. 1 is the first chromosome, Q is the long arm, 2 is the second subregion of the chromosome and 4 is the fourth band of that subregion. Now how will the scientist identify the chromosome? So to, that, uh, to look into that, we have to know some similarities and differences of the chromosome. First is the size. It is the easiest way to tell that two chromosomes are different. Then is the banding pattern. We will understand it in detail. There is bands which make each chromosome unique. There is centromere. What is centromere? It is a part of the chromosome where it is constricted. So, according to the centromere position, the chromosomes can be metacentric. If the centromere lies near the center of the chromosome, they can be submetacentric. If the centromere is off center, otherwise it can be ectocentric it, if it resides at a very one near it. Now, about banding. Now, banding in this, to study this, the chromosomes, they are stained with various dyes so that segments of the chromosomes can be identified. Most of the methods can recognize up to 550 bands, but higher resolution methods can distinguish up to 850 bands and this will allow us to identify about small deletions. Now there are types of banding. We, there are many types of banding. We will study some in detail and other just the names. The first is the G banding. G banding G stands for GIMSA stain. So in this, we digest the chromosomes with trypsin and then we stain it with GIMSA stain. It yields a series of lightly and darkly sta stained bands. The dark regions, they are heterochromatic and they are AT rich. AT means adenine and thiamine. Whereas the light regions, they are euchromatic and they are GC rich. Next is the R bending. R bending is just the reverse of G bending. In this, the dark regions are euchromatic, whereas in G bending, the dark regions were hyperchromatic. C bending, C stands for centromeres or constitutive heterochromatin. So C bending is just to see the location of centromere. Then there is Q bending, there is T bending, there is silver banding. There is spectral karyotyping and there is digital karyotyping. We are not discussing these in detail. Now, how, which cells will be used for chromosomal analysis? What sample we will take for karyotyping? Ideally, any cell with a nucleus, we can take it. But we have to use a cell which is actively dividing. Why? I will explain in detail later on. So, mostly the cells which are used are lymphocytes, skin cells, tumor cells are used, the cancerous cells, these are used to know the specific mutations which take place in these cells. 
the cells can be amniotic and chorionic villi. These are taken to see, look for the genetic disorders present in the fetus. Now, which tissues are appropriate? This tissue which can be stimulated to undergo cell division in vitro. And because it is only the mitosis in which we can look the chromosomes, in which we can visualize the chromosomes. So how we will prepare a karyotype? Firstly, the harvested cells, which can be lymphocytes, skin cells, they are first cultured. And then these cells are treated with colchicine. Colchicine arrests the cells in metaphase stage. It is very important that we have to arrest these cells in metaphase stage. And then these, when these cells are arrested, then they are stained and we look for the chromosomes. So again revising the cultured blood cells, example lymphocytes, they are cultured. Then the colchicine is added to stop the mitosis at metaphase stage. And then we will just take the packed cells. The packed cells are uh, placed on a slide and they are stained and these slides are then scanned for the metaphase spreads. Normally 10 to 30 cells are analyzed and a good spread where there is minimum number of overlapping chromosomes is found and a photograph is taken and the further analysis is done by a computer. So how we will do it? We will uh, look for the slide under the microscope. Microscope is attached to a camera. Camera is attached to a computer. So the computer assisted karyotype preparation is now commercially available. In this system a television camera and a computer are coupled to a microscope. As the chromosomes in the metaphase are located, the television camera locates the image. The image is transported to a computer and where it is analyzed and processed into a karyotype. So this is how there is a person who looks for the ideal spread under the microscope. Then the photo is taken and the photo is then sent to computer. Where it is processed into a karyotype. This is the random picture in which the chromosomes are not arranged. Whereas after arranging the karyotype will look like this. Now the clinical applications of the karyotyping. We, will, we are studying about chromosomes so mostly we will look for the abnormalities. So abnormalities can be numerical that is the presence of extra or the missing chromosomes or they can be structural like translocation, inversion, large cell deletion, duplications. So First, we are going to uh, study a disease known as chronic myeloid leukemia. In this, there is a translocation from the chromosome number 9 to chromosome number 22. There is ABL-BCR translocation which leads to formation of Philadelphia chromosome. So, this translocation can be seen in the tumor cells of chronic myeloid leukemia. Secondly, in Down syndrome, we can use it. It is trisomy of chromosome number 21. So we can see in the picture that the 21 chromosome, they are 3 in number. That is, there is trisomy of chromosome number 21. Turner syndrome. Here we can see there is only one X chromosome. There is no Y chromosome. And the second X chromosome which should be present in this person is not present. This is Turner syndrome. The Klinefelter syndrome, in this both pair of X and one Y chromosome is present. There is an extra X chromosome. Then there are two more syndromes which can be identified using karyotyping. One is Patau syndrome and second is Edward syndrome. Both are trisomies. Patau syndrome is trisomy of 13 whereas Edward syndrome is trisomy of chromosome number 18. Thank you. Do like and subscribe the video if you have learned from it. Thank you.